All right, well, we're gonna jump right into our series today and uh, it's called a, uh, a Scattered Seed and we started this last week if you're here with us. If you got your Bibles, you can turn to 1 Peter. It comes out of the uh, 1 Peter, out of his epistles and it's, we're in uh, chapter one and two. So if you just would get into those two places, you'll be, you'll be good uh, with us today. Uh, but I wanna talk, uh, I wanna give you a recap. So if you weren't here with us last week, you can always watch online, they're there for you. Uh, you can, you can uh, download those or watch them on all of our uh, different platforms that we have. But we talked last week about the super bloom, and uh, really just uh, that moment when the word comes alive. It's, it, it's remarkable. Now, uh, in America, many of us, most of us have heard the word of God. Now, if you're like me, I, I know I heard the word of God. It just, it never stuck. And it wasn't that the seed didn't stick. It was that I just wasn't, the soil wasn't ready for me. Um, but there, because when I started coming here to Westridge, this was, um, you know, one of the, this was the first church for me where I really got plugged in and connected. And this is where I gave my life to the Lord. This is where the Lord really met me. Um, but I remember that um, I didn't really know the Easter story. Now, it wasn't that I've never heard it. It just, you know, I was, my heart was hard or, you know, I just wasn't in a place in my life to hear it. And I remember it hitting me for the first time. And that's when the super bloom, that's when it began to happen. That's when the word came alive and it just began to change me. And I pray that, that that's the case for all of you today uh, or many of you last week. But allow God just to, to do what he can do. Now, last week we shared with you about the seed. The seed is not us. The seed is the word of God. Uh, the Bible makes that perfectly clear in parables that the seed is the word of God. And John 1 defines not only is it the word of God, the word of God is Jesus. And Jesus is the word. And so there's something powerful when you allow Jesus to come alive in your life. Something happens in all of us and you begin to see something. So today I wanna talk about the identity of the seed. And I brought some seeds with me. But I do have one question. I, you, know, it's, you, this, you guys are laughing. If you were here last week, I threw seeds at you last week. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to do that today. Um, but, um, but I am going to talk about seeds a little bit today. Uh, I do have one question before I get started. Um, and really, uh, here's the question, and this is really going to kind of shape our message today. Uh, says, what will I get? If I have a seed, what will I get if I sow the seed properly? What am I going to get? You're going to get whatever that seed is, right? You can't, uh, how many of you planted grass? Anybody planted grass? Most of us have. That's an easy seed that we've all can scatter. If you plant grass, and this is what this is. This is grass seed. I've had this for a few years at my house. And so um, actually this is uh, uh, for shade. And so it's got a little bit, so man's kind of done some fun stuff to this seed. Now there's seed in there, but you won't be able to see this even if he's in. That is the seed. It's so tiny. Grass seed is so tiny. But what amazes me is, as identity is packed into the seed, even like, I think this expired in 2019, but I can still plant this. That's what it said on the bag. I can still plant this and it will still grow. And not only will it still grow, if I plant this, is it gonna grow an apple tree? No, no it's not gonna grow an apple tree. Why? Because this is a Kentucky bluegrass seed. And I don't have any issues it's from Kentucky. That's just, that's just where the grass is made, right? That's where it grows. But this is good for different areas, right? It grows well in West Virginia, it grows well in Ohio. But this is specifically, this bowl is specifically for shaded areas. So what they've done is they've covered, they, they've captured these seeds with some mulch and fertilizer. And, you know, in shaded areas, right, you think about it, when you get shade, it's because of something. You have an overhang, a tree, a bush, something when the sun hits, it creates shade and stuff doesn't grow real well under that shade. So this is made for the shade. So it holds a little bit more moisture, it holds a little bit more water and it allows this seed to be successful. But at the end of the day, this seed is gonna be Kentucky bluegrass. It can't be anything but Kentucky bluegrass. The seed can't go, well, I don't want to be bluegrass today. I want to be an apple tree. It can't happen. The identity of this seed is in the seed. And the same is true. I know every analogy breaks down, but the same is true about the seed that's in you. That seed can only be Christ. It can only be truth. It can only be what God has placed inside of you. Now, you can believe it or you cannot believe it, but you're not going to change the seed. The word of God is going to be the same today tomorrow and forever, it won't change. And so the same is true with these seeds. If you plant this seed, you're gonna get Kentucky bluegrass. Now, I, there's a lot of different seeds. What I love about God is he's very creative, right? Think about it. Everything has a seed. And that seed knows who it is. It knows the identity of who it is. It doesn't matter if you, if you drop a peach seed, you're gonna get a peach tree. If you drop grass seed, you're gonna get grass. If you plant an herb, you're gonna get that herb, that specific herb. And there, there's no changing that seed. The seed knows who that seed is. Not only that, the seed also, like this Kentucky bluegrass, if I plant this and it grows, it's not only just gonna 
uh, come up as Kentucky bluegrass, but it also is going to multiply itself. It's going to throw more of that same seed. That same seed doesn't change, by the way. It's just like the blade doesn't come up and go, man, I'm tired of being this bluegrass. I want to be, I want to be whatever. I want to be Bermuda grass. It, it can't happen. It produces the same seed. And that's what I want you to get, get you to see today, that as for, as for us, if you're a Christ follower today, if you make that commitment that Dave talked about, about giving your life to Christ, I want you to know something. You've got to represent the seed that's in you. We've got to be the same as the seed. And this is what First Peter talks about in these, these epistles is, as Christ followers, we've got to make a choice, and it is a choice, to represent the Lord that's inside of you. You're going to see today that we've bought some lies. We've said some things about the seed that aren't true. Now, it doesn't mean God's mad at you. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It just simply means that we don't know who Christ is. And probably you're struggling with who you are. Because the seed that's in you, the the word of God that's in you, Christ that's in you, he made you. And this is pretty wild to think about. He knows you better than you because he made you. A lot of times we think we can tell God who we are, but make no mistake, he knows you better than you. He's the creator. He knows you. The only way, and so when I talk about the identity of the seed, in 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm not going to read this whole passage, but I am going to, uh, right now, but I am going to break it down for you. I want to talk about a few things. First of all, first point I want to, two points today. The first one is this. Seeds need the right environment. Is that true? Like if I scatter these seeds, I've got to have the right environment. Now I can throw the seeds like I did last week wherever I want. But if it's not in the right environment, it's not going to produce. Now it doesn't mean the seed's dead or the seed's no good. It's just I didn't put it in the right environment for it to thrive. And the same is true for us as a Christ follower. We have to put ourselves in the right environment. We've got to put ourselves in a place to grow. We gotta put ourselves in a place to hear the word of God. We gotta put ourselves in a place to understand who Christ is. Today, if you're there's a lot of ways that you can do this. If you're here, if, if this is new to you, you're new in your faith, actually we're gonna read this a little bit later. First Peter 2 talks about it. Uh, it's a lot like a newborn child, right? A newborn child has to be fed. Can't feed himself yet. Can't he, feed, see, feed herself yet, right? You need help with that. But at some point, right, if you have babies, I know there's some good small babies in here. It's crazy how quick those hands are sticky. If you're a mom, you know. Those little hands of a baby, man, it's like, it's, I don't know what, they, what God does with those hands, but it's like sticky. You give them those little stars, right? Those little num-nums. I mean, they grab them and they're like, they stick to their hands. I'm sure it's the saliva they put all over it, but it's, it's sticky. And how fast is it they go from here to here? I mean, they, they learn quick to feed themselves, don't they? And then it turns to the spoon. Oh, it's fun when you got a baby that's learning with the spoon, right? It's all over their face. They enjoy it. And that's fun for a while, right? Cute. You got all the pictures. But the same is true in your, with you and your faith. If you're new, look, it's okay. Like, you have to commit to, you have to put yourself in the right environment. So for you, if, you're, if this is new to you, that your faith is new, you've come to Christ, you've got to commit. You've got to make some commitments, let me read this passage, and then I'm going to talk about some commitments that you need to make. It says in 1 Peter chapter 13, it says, So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope, all, not some, put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God chose you, or just as God who chose you is holy, for the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. Now I know there's a lot there, and maybe this is, when I say you've got to be holy, how many of you have said, I'm not holy? I'm not worthy? I'm not good enough? You see, this is what's happening is the enemy's trying to snatch up the good seed that God's put in you, and he's trying to lie to you. It's not about works. This is not about legalism. This is about love. God says, you've got to make a choice. It doesn't say you might be holy. It says you must be holy because he's holy. That's the seed that's in you, right? Is, is the word of God, is this, is this holy? It is. That's what's in you. 
You have the holy word of God and you can make a choice to serve God. You can make a choice to follow God. It's your choice. I'm not saying perfection. The only perfect one is Jesus. But what I am saying is you have to put yourself in the right environment. So if you're new in your faith, you've, look, commit to being here throughout the rest of the year. Commit to being in church where you're hearing the word of God. Commit to being around some people that, that, that can come alongside you, right? Just like a little baby. Help them, let them help feed you. But eventually you got to get to a place where you can feed yourself. It's not that you don't need others around you. That's still gonna be the case. The Bible says don't negate meeting together because it's good. It's, it's a blessing, it's encouraging. But wherever you're at, you gotta put yourself in the right environment so you can thrive and you can succeed. Maybe you've been here a long time. Maybe you've been uh, following Christ for a long time. Look, we're all at different places, but the reality is you're a follower of Christ. It says in the Bible that you're a disciple. Do you know what a disciple means? You're a student, right? All the kids are getting ready to go back to school. Some of them are happy about it. I talked to some of them in service. And they're like, yes, I can't wait. Some of them are like, no. But the reality is Christ, we're students. We're gonna be constantly learning about the Lord. It doesn't matter if this is day one or if you've been following them for 20 or 30 years. But the reality is, is you gotta make sure wherever you're at to put yourself in the right environment. Maybe you've been following God for a long time. Let me just encourage you, challenge you. Maybe you're here. Look, it's very important that you're not just feeding yourself and sitting there, right? That we're just, boy, the word's good. Mm -mm -mm. Just keep eating the word, eating the word, eating the word, eating the word. It's good, and that's a good thing. But at some point, you've gotta disciple someone. You've got to give away that good food that God's put in you. You've got to put away give it, that good word that God's put in you. You've got to share that. Go and make disciples. That's what Jesus said. Not eat, 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 eat. And don't do anything with it. So you've got to make a commitment. You've got to put yourself in the right environment, whether you're new and you need to grow. Maybe, maybe you don't know who you are. You're not sure what God wants you to do. Look, go through the growth track here. These aren't here just to have good events. They're there to help you grow. They're there to help you take your next step, whatever it is. Maybe you're here today and you need to get around some people that, that speak life. You need to get around some people that can encourage you, that can lift you up. Look, put your, go to a life group. Get around some people that can love on you and that can encourage you, that you can share life with. Look, none of us are perfect. We, a lot of us think that we're the only one going through this, this situation, but I promise you there's others that have been through it. It's not the same situation, I get it, but the root's probably the same. Put yourself in the right environment so you can thrive. Think about it this way. If you struggle with, maybe you got a potty mouth is a nice way to say it, right? If you put yourself in the environment where that's all you're hearing, guess what's gonna come out of you? The same thing, right? So you've gotta put yourself in an environment to change your speaking. It's not easy, I get it. But remember what God said. Put yourself in a position, you're holy because I'm holy. Do you think that's coming out of the Lord's mouth? No. And I'm not being judgmental. I'm not trying to be hard on you. I'm just saying you have to change your environment. You've got to make a choice to say, God, I, I don't want to speak this way anymore. I don't want to treat people this way anymore. God, I, I don't want to be in the same situation. Isn't that why you came to the Lord? Didn't you come for help? Think about it. Salvation is beautiful, miraculous, graceful, merciful. It's all the, the goodness of God. It's amazing what God's done. But in reality, we all came to God because we needed him. We messed it up. We blew it. And look, we're all on the same page here. It's not like, well, your sin was really bad and mine was just a little bad. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter what the sin is. We all need Christ. So put yourself in a circumstance, put yourself in an environment where you can thrive and you can grow and you can make the right choice. You can choose to worship God. Look, you've, you've chosen for years. And again, I'm not trying to be hard on you if this is you. I just want you to realize, look, you've chosen the same thing over and over and over again, especially if you struggle with maybe an addiction or you struggle with doing the same thing all the time. How about choosing something different? How about asking Jesus? Look, choose Jesus. Let him help you. When Jesus saved you, when you made that commitment to follow Jesus, he didn't just like leave you out in the dark. He sent the Holy Spirit to help you. 
And the Holy Spirit is God himself. It's the beautiful seed of perfection. It's a beautiful seed of holiness. And he's there to help you. That In fact, Jesus said that the job of the Holy Spirit is to lead you to truth. And so maybe you're struggling here. Look, the Holy Spirit's gonna help lead you to truth and get some people around you, put yourself in an environment where people can help you, hold you accountable. Those are all great things, aren't they? They're good things. You must be holy because I'm holy. It's, it's, it's not a like, well, let me measure. I'm, I'm holy today. I'm not holy. No, you are holy because God saved you. And the seed of holiness is in you. And now we've got to start making choices and put ourselves in the right environment so we can model and imitate the one that's in us. It says in 1 Peter 1.13, it says, you've got to prepare your minds for action right? You got to prepare your mind. You got to prepare yourself for action. And the way you do that is, is you got to put yourself in the right environment. And secondly, you got to exercise self-control. Oh, we need to have self-control. I'm sure the Lord is just as tired as all of you as seeing Christians that won't control themselves. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Yet we tell God, I can't, I can't control myself. Yes, you can. You can do it. Put yourself in the right environment. Put yourself around the right people. Let the word of God speak to you. You can do it. You can do it. It's good to tell yourself no sometimes, especially when you know it's not honoring God. You've got to tell yourself no. Amen. You, that's what, this is what repentance means, right? Repentance doesn't mean, God, I'm sorry, and that's it. No, repentance means, God, I'm sorry. I'm going to make a different decision next time. Right. I'm going to put myself in a, in a position where I can make a choice that honors you, I'm gonna choose you over myself or over a situation or over a circumstance or, or over pleasing somebody else, whatever it is, but we've gotta have self-control. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses one through three. It says, Make, uh, get rid of all evil behavior, be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and unkind speech. How many of you know those are all great things, right? Getting rid of unkind speech, that's good. Getting rid of hypocrisy, that's good. Getting rid of deceitfulness, that's good. And so this is what God is saying. Look, I want you to make the choice. Put yourself in an environment. Like newborn babies, you must crave, spure, crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for nourish, nourishment. What, what if that was you? What if you were like the newborn baby? If you got a newborn baby and they're hungry, what do they do? <laughs> they let you know about it, don't they? Amen. Now, they can't do it for themselves. They can't make it happen. And if you're new in your faith, look, you might need some help, but cry out for the Lord. Cry out for what he has for you. Cry out for the nourishment of the word. Taste and see how good the Lord's kindness is. Put yourself in an environment where you can thrive and you can grow. I don't care where you're at in your faith. Put yourself in that environment. Maybe it's time that you led somebody. Maybe it's time that you, you served. I can tell you, Firsthand from my experience, the greatest growth in my faith came by serving just like Dave. I was in the tech booth for years. That's, that's where I learned to grow. I heard the word three times. Every single weekend, we had three services at that point. And that was good for me. Maybe because I'm hard-headed and I needed three times, but it was also good. I put myself in an environment to serve others, but I also received. Grew in my faith. I got to work with a team. I got to lead people. I got to help people. And if, if that's not you, you're not, in, look, you, serving Jesus isn't an option. It's not like, well, maybe I'll serve you. No, you have to serve Christ. Not because he's forcing you and not because you have to, because Christ didn't come to serve, to be served. He came to serve you. Did you ask for his salvation? Did you ask for him to be sacrificed on the cross? Did you ask him to be crucified? Did you ask him to shed every drop of blood so you could be cleansed of your sins? Did you ask him to raise from the grave? You didn't. He did it for you. Before you were even created, he did it for you. How much more do we want to serve a God that has laid it all on the line for us? And now we're all in for him. So put yourself in the right environment. Have some self-control. Yes, give yourself some grace, but stop making excuses or justifying why you're doing it. Right? We're masters of telling God, well, God, I just, just, just this one time. 
And after 100 times, well, God, you know, it's not that bad. Everyone else is doing it. No, don't justify it. Don't make an excuse. Know God's heart. And if you don't know it, then figure it out, right? Cry out for nourishment. Figure out what God desires of you. Figure out God's heart. Get some help. Go to a life group. Get around some people. Be in church, whatever it is. Put yourself in the right environment so you can honor the one that saved you. You don't have to, you get to. It's such an honor. It's such a privilege. It's a blessing. Now, remember the identity of the seed, right? You gotta remember who Christ is. You've gotta figure out a way that you can remember it. I was talking to somebody, uh, and this was a few weeks ago, and, and um, he's been following the Lord a long time. He's been in the Word for a long time, and, um, and you know, he's uh, a great guy. Now, but he's in a situation now where he can't read the word. And he was a little hard on himself and he was a little bit like, I, 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 you know, because we're, we're human. Man and we're human. And he got real hard on himself and he's like, well, I'm, I'm just not reading enough. I'm not in the word enough. God's mad at me. No, he's not. This is why in the Psalms it says to guard your heart, to make sure that you're putting the word in. There's gonna be seasons where, I don't know, I don't know what the season may be, but maybe, maybe your eyesight goes or maybe you have a surgery and you just can't do it. But what's amazing is, is if you're planting the seed on good soil in your heart and it's here and you're planting it, you're planting, you're sowing and you're sowing, there's gonna be a time that whether you have this book or not, guess what's gonna come out of you? The word. The harvest is right in there. You know what God expects of you. You know what he desires of you. And you're not doing it to get, his, get favor from him. You're doing it because that's who he is and you love him and you're modeling who he is to you. So you gotta know, the, you gotta know what the identity of that seed is because the identity of that seed is gonna speak life into you. Maybe you're sitting here today, all of us go through this, so please hear me. Nobody's holier than thou, right? We, we all struggle with self-insecurity. We all struggle with knowing who we are, right? Because there was a point where you didn't know God, so you can't truly know who you are if you don't know who made you. And so all of us go through this, and whether you're in middle school or high school, like in those ages, like it's good to know Jesus because Jesus is the one that's gonna speak identity into you. You can't find it in textbooks. You can't find it in degrees. You can't find it in followers. You can't find it in, in uh, money. You can't find it in a job or a position. Now, all those things are fine. You may be talented and gifted, but it doesn't say who you are. Only Christ can establish, only the seed that's in you can establish because he made you and he knows who you are. And many of us have bought the lie. So let me, uh, let me share the uh, point two. So point one is, is put yourself in an environment to thrive. Second, remember the Lord and remember to love. So love God, love people. This is our vision. You've got to love the Lord. You've got to know who Christ is. That's the only way that you're going to know who you are is you've got to understand who Christ is. So you're going to have to find a way to tell yourself or to teach yourself. Music's a good one for me. So maybe you're not great at memorizing scripture. Remember, don't make excuses. Figure a way out. Be hungry, nourish. Find a way that you can remember these things. Sometimes you're good at writing. Some of you are, are better if you write, or some of you are better if you put your hands, uh, hands on things. Some of you are audible learners. Some of you love to, are learners, and you can study, and you remember that way. Look, it doesn't matter how you remember, but figure a way to know Christ and to know who he is. And some of it is just living life for Christ. You're gonna learn that way. Some of it is you're gonna, you're gonna learn, obviously, from the word of God. You're gonna learn from others. You're gonna learn by God just being God and seeing what he, only he can do. There's tons of ways that you can learn, but you've gotta put yourself in a position to know him and see him. First Peter 1, 17, 22 says, through 22 says this. Uh, and before I read this, why do we take communion? To remember it's not something we do just to do. It's not, well, we only do it the once of the month or whatever. No, you can take this communion as often as you like is what the Bible says if you, wanna, if you start reading the scriptures, as often as you like. It doesn't have to be me that distributes it. You can distribute with your family. But we do it because we remember, it's important to remember what Christ has done. Remember that his body was broken for me. His body was broken because of my sin and my iniquity. His blood was shed for the not only for to cleanse me of my sins, but it was also shed for the promise of the Holy Spirit to come into my life. It's so you remember how good God is. And you've got to, I don't care if it's day one or 30 years in, you've got to remember what an amazing Savior you have. You've got to keep reminding yourself. 
Here's what First Peter says. Now, Peter's well advanced in his life. He's, he's very mature, and he's, he's helping other believers. And he says this, remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray, remember who you pray to. He, play, he, he has no favorites. How many of you thought God didn't like you? How many of you thought God doesn't know your name, that God doesn't care? Listen, it's because we're all insecure and we've all had those thoughts. God doesn't play favorites. He desperately wants you to know him. The Bible says if you seek him, you'll find him. If you knock, he'll answer. If you ask, he hears your prayer. That's the God that you serve. But a lot of times, because we don't know God, we buy the lie of like, well, God doesn't care about me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't know my name. Remember who do you pray. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear, not fear as in like he's gonna kill me, but a fear as in a respect and a reverence and an awe that you have a God that knows you and cares about you and knows what's best for you. Of him during your time here as temporary residence. Think about that. You're only here for a second. Your temporary residence on this earth. You don't live here forever. Your eternity is with who? With Christ. If you're a Christ follower, your eternity is with him. But while you're on earth, he's gonna give you that abundant life he talked about. For you know that God paid a ransom. Here's how you remember God. He paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which loses value over time. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, it has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you've come to trust in God. And you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed of your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must have sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. I love what Peter says is come to a place to have a respect for Christ. Respect what he's done for you. It will change you forever. Respect that it wasn't just like he paid a couple dollars for you. He laid his life on the line for you. Before you even asked or knew that you were in trouble, he paid the price for you, and it cost him everything. This was the most brutal, torturous moment of any person in history, and God did that for you. Remember the cost and the blessing of Christ. First Peter says it this way. As you come to him, the living stone, that's Jesus, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, like Christ, you're, you're to model Christ, being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. How many of you think of yourself that way? I'm not saying walk around and go, holy priesthood right here, my friends. <laughs> All I'm saying is that's how God sees you. You don't see yourself that way, do you? Be honest. What do you say about yourself? You know what probably 70% of you in this, in this room says? I am a... You say you're a sinner, don't you? That's not what this says, does it? You see what I'm saying? We buy lies about ourselves, but the one that spoke identity says, you're not a sinner, you're royal. I saved you. You're now a royal priesthood. Watch what else it says. Offering spiritual sacrifices, acceptable, acceptable to God through Christ. It's acceptable to God. Look, you're saying I'm not worthy, and Jesus is saying, no, it's acceptable to me. Not because of you, but because of my son, because of Christ. Look, he, is, he takes great pleasure and great joy when you, when you trust God and you serve him. When you're doing it for the right reasons, it's so acceptable to him. He loves it. It's joyful for him. You're not a sinner. You're a royal priesthood. You're chosen by God. For the scripture says, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious stone. By the way, that's Jesus. And those who trust in him will never be put to shame. Never be put to shame. Yet many of us as believers, we're locked up in shame. Do you hear the difference between what God says and what you say? This is what I'm saying. He's the one that speaks identity into you. You're not gonna get that from anywhere else. That's why you need the word. This is why you need this, this precious seed. It's more precious than gold and silver that loses value. It goes up and down, it fluctuates. No, the word of God is eternal. It's the same today, tomorrow, and forever. It's a treasure. So remember the cost and remember the blessing of Christ. 
Next, remember to obey the truth. And let me clarify what the truth is. Because in our culture today, and I'm not trying to say our culture is worse than the culture when Jesus was here or the Old Testament. Look, the enemy's the same. He's been a liar since day one. So when you hear statements like, well, it's my truth. Well, that's my truth. That's not the truth. That may be what you've told yourself to believe that this is okay. But the only truth that's the absolute truth, the only truth that we have is Christ. Because we've all sinned. I don't care who it is on the planet. Someone who's saying, this is my truth, they've sinned. So they can't be the measure of truth. And you can't be the measure of truth. I'm not trying to judge them. I'm just saying, if you wanna know what truth is, you've gotta know the one that's been perfect, that's never sinned. That's the guy that you allow to speak truth. And that's the seed that's in you. Christ is the truth. The seed of God is the truth. The word of God is the truth. And that's the only truth that's ever been established. The enemy has gone through all of history and tried to shine up everything else and make it look like God. That's what a counterfeit is, right? It looks like God, but it's not God. And so you've got to obey the truth. And it's not legalism. You're not a robot. God isn't controlling you with a remote control. Look, we obey the truth because God loves us. He loved us first. And I am saying thankful and I'm grateful. And I know what he has for me is better than I can come up with. 1 Peter 2, 9, 10 says, before, but, oh, sorry, let me give you the context. The verse right before this, go home and read it. It's talking about those that disobey God Right? Those that disobey God, they, they're not gonna follow God. And, and we're just saying, look, we're not judging them for it. That's just where they are. And we've all been there where we disobeyed God. But God's talking to you as a Christ follower. He's talking to you, putting yourself in the right environment. He's talking to you, uh, having self-control. Here's what he says. But you're not like that, being disobedient. For you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own position, as possession, as a result, you can show others the goodness of God for he called you out of the darkness and into this wonderful light. Once you had no identity as people and now you're God's people. Once you received no mercy, but now you've received God's mercy. You see, this is where identity comes from. Again, look, listen to how God speaks about you. You're God's chosen people. You're chosen people. God is not mad at you. He hand-selected you. He chose you. He saved you. Why? Because you receive the grace of God. You receive the salvation of Christ. You receive the goodness of God. God isn't playing favorites. He's not up there saying, no, you can't have it, and you can't have it. No, it's available for all. In fact, that's his desire, that all men would be saved, men being men and women, mankind, humanity. And for those of you that are following Christ, you are his chosen people. You're a royal priest. You're a holy nation. You're God's very own possession. Amen. That's who you are. That's your identity. Well, what happens if somebody says something on the contrary? What happens if somebody says, even lies about you? I'm not trying to be hard, but does it matter? At the end of the day, you're, all of us are gonna stand before Christ. All of, unbeliever and believer. All of us are gonna stand before Jesus. And I know it's hard to hear things. I know it's hard when people say wrong things and they, and they slander and lie, but it's not about winning the argument. It's not even about getting their approval. Just obey the Lord, obey the truth. They may see you in the incorrect way, but God sees you in the right way. Remember, you're God's chosen people. You've got to, re, you've got to re, uh, put these things in mind. I'm God's chosen. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm his, I'm his possession. I'm his. That's who you are, and he loves you greatly. And it doesn't matter what others say. It doesn't matter what the world say. It doesn't matter what culture says. It doesn't matter what's hip and popular. It doesn't matter who has the most followers and who has the coolest TikTok videos. Those things are fine. You may be really good at those things. That's a talent, and that's a gift. That's something God's given to you, but remember, you're his. You're his. Amen. 
The other thing it says in this verse, show love to others in the church, to your brothers and sisters and outside. It doesn't limit it to just the church. Although in 1 Peter chapter one, it says to your brothers and sisters, because it's speaking specifically to those that you're doing life together with. But in, in 2 Peter, or in 1 Peter chapter two, it says also to be cautious of those you're around. Watch what it says in um, uh, second, or 1 Peter chapter two, verse 12. So in chapter one, it says, you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters, speaking of other believers, love each other deeply with all your heart. And then in, in the second chapter of 1 Peter says, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. How's that? Be careful, now listen to this. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, like that's hard to hear, but even if they do that, they will see that you're, you're honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Here's what Jesus is saying. Look, they may judge you wrong for the rest of your life. But at the end of the day, when everyone stands before Christ, the one that's just and right about all things, he's gonna make it very clear what's right or wrong. A lot of us, we get wrapped up around what others say or what's posted or what's tweeted or what's done, especially if it's gone against who you are as a Christ follower. And God is saying, look, you can't let that define who you are. You are who I say you are. He's the one that sets your identity. And even if they go their whole life talking bad about you, I'll make it right in the end. Amen. So who are you gonna believe? The God that saved you? The God that all will stand before? Or somebody on this earth? And it's not that God doesn't love them. They may be totally wrong. You were wrong at one time. They may be totally in error. You've done things in error. So this isn't about you winning or you making them look bad. In fact, what the Bible says is actually opposite. It says, when they do that, you continue to live an honorable life. Continue to live like Christ. Continue to be loving and kind. Continue to live for the Lord. And it, and it says in those situations, when you do that, they will give honor to God. Let God do the judging, okay? He's much better at it, by the way, than you are. Amen. Let him do that, especially in the church, please. Now, I'm not talking about churches that speak heresy or false prophecy. I'm not talking about that, but believers that love Jesus that are saved by the same blood as you, let God do the judging, please. You just keep living an honorable life. Keep choosing to follow the Lord. Put yourself in the right environment. Have self-control, which means over your mouth and your actions. It means all things. And serve the Lord. Just be honorable. Just be a man or woman of integrity, of character. And it says here that God will be honored. God knows. He knows. Last thing. The seed in you is speaking your identity. Christ in you is what's speaking your identity. That's it. I want to read this verse one more time, and I'll have you stand to your feet. I just want you to close your eyes. I just want you to listen to it. Don't worry about reading it off a screen, or don't worry about, just close your eyes and listen. But I need you to, I need you to take it. I need you to receive it. I need you to receive it. If you're here today and you haven't given Jesus your life, look, start there. Just say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. That's all you have to do. I'm ready. Yes, say, I'm sorry, I, I repented, but God, I am ready to serve you. I'm ready to follow you. Just listen, every eye close. You are not like that. You are not disobedient, for you are a chosen people. You're a royal priest. You're a holy nation. You're God's very own possession. You're a royal priest. You're a holy nation. You're God's very own possession. You're a chosen people. You're marked for eternity, my friends. You've got to start believing this. Lord, I just pray for everybody here. Holy Spirit, what are you saying to each one of us? What do, God, how do we, first of all, we couldn't have done this without you. It's not even possible that we're on the planet without you. You made us all. You know us all deeply, Lord. You know us better than we know ourselves. And so, God, you not only made a way so we can know you, but you desire that we understand 
the eternal life that we have. You desire that we understand that we can live for God, that we are your holy people, that we are a chosen generation. God, you've set us apart to do mighty things for you. Lord, and it doesn't matter what the enemy's trying to do to get us away from it. God, we, we need to start speaking these identity statements. God, we're yours. We're God's possession. We're not the enemy's possession. We're God's possession. God, the enemy isn't stronger than you, Lord. Jesus, he's under your feet. And God, we choose to follow you. We choose to be led by you. We choose to learn from you. God, we wanna put ourselves in the right environment so we can grow and thrive and be testimonies. Lord, in your word, when it says that we're living sacrifices, that's our life. That's our worship. That's how we live. That's how we speak. That's how we treat people. And Lord, when we live for you, that's so acceptable and honorable to you. You're not disappointed with us. You love us deeply. And you want the best for us. Lord, there's so many more passages where you speak life over us, Lord. There's so many things that you say, like there's no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. God, you have desired for us to win in life, for, to live for you, to, to show people the goodness of God and the kindness of God. But we must, we must, God, we must follow you. God, put us in the right environments, put us in the right relationships, the right situations the right circumstances. Let us, what we hear and what we listen to, let it be honorable to you. Because at the end of the day, Lord, what we put in our heart is what's gonna come out of our lives. And so we may have to make different choices. We may have to repent today. We may have to say we're sorry, but God, today we wanna choose you in a new way. And God, that's acceptable to you. Can't change yesterday, but I can change today. So Lord, this is all for your glory. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for the abundant life that you died to give us. Lord, may we never forget the price you paid for us. In Jesus' name, everyone said.